Let's look more now at how China is trying to cope with an increased demand for water and what the ecological consequences of that higher demand are. We can speak to Jennifer Turner, who joins us now from Washington. She's the director of the China Environment Forum at the Woodrow Wilson Center. Jennifer, thanks so much for being with us. How bad are Thank drought conditions me. in how bad are drought conditions in China right now? Well, China has always faced a cycle of droughts. And I mean, case in point, just this January, China's largest freshwater lake, Poyang, it dried up. It's twice as large as the footprint of the city of London. That's a big lake. And, but what's more striking is that this is in southern China, which is where about 80% of China's rain falls. We, normally, we think about north China being dry with the Gobi Desert, you know, Beijing's up there always needing water transfers. But southern China, since particularly about 2010, we've been seeing a lot more regular droughts. 2010, about 51 million people in southwest China faced severe water shortages, and it impacted agriculture. And, and industry, and not just industry in the southwest. Southwest China has a lot of hydroelectric power. And in 2010, we did some research and reporting on this that about half, a lot of the big dams, their reservoirs were at half level, so they couldn't send the electricity to the, to the east coast. So it's, it's got a lot of you know, ripple effects throughout the entire economy, particularly as this drought is, is increasing in the south. Yeah, what are they gonna do about the fact, Jennifer, that there's simply not enough water for the demand? Well, I mean, it's, and, and they, well, first of all, they recognize that there's not enough water for the demand. I mean, they, per capita, it's, it's extremely, it's one of the lowest in the world for water resources. And the Chinese government recently warned that by 2030, if they do business as usual, how they're do, using water, they will not be able to meet demand. So they're starting to talk, you know, they've traditionally talked more about water supply management. They've got a big south-north water transfer project, you know, and, but they've done water transfers for decades, moving water where it's needed talking about building desalination plants to supply water. But that's, even that won't meet it. China, they need to become more aggressive in terms of water conservation, increasing the price of water. And this is in the 12 five-year plan to increase recycling. But this is a lot more difficult than, than building water transfers or even, you know, hydropower. So Jennifer, are we potentially looking at a crisis in terms of just people being able to access clean water? Yeah. The, it's great you mentioned that because China is probably the only country that I know of that has this term, which is water pollution induced scarcity. About 35% of their river water is at the lowest three levels of water quality. And at that, those low levels, it shouldn't even come in contact with humans. But we, we have seen that, you know, it is often used to irrigate crops and that people, but people do face a kind of a drought of clean water and, you know, 300 million or so people in China can't access clean water. So, th but that is also another opportunity because if China really start, can become more aggressive in actually enforcing their water pollution control laws, it would open up a lot of clean water for the people. Jennifer, can I finally ask you about fracking, which of course we know China is pursuing lots of countries as a means of energy. It's very water intensive, isn't it? So surely this presents yet another challenge. Well, well actually, I mean, just so you know that in terms, you know, China's big energy source is coal. And coal, you know, we've estimated is using about 20% of China's water right now. And so hydrofracking is just still barely coming online. And that if per megawatt hour, it could use less, a lot less than coal. But what, what happens is that if the water that's used for the fracking as it's pumped up, if it's not cleaned, it just adds and exacerbates the water quality problem China is having. Okay, Jennifer, we could have talked for so much longer, but thanks so much for joining us from Washington. Thank, Thank you. you.